So first there was Extinction Rebellion and then Insulate Britain. Uh, now there's an offshoot of Extinction Rebellion calling itself Just Stop Oil. And I'm sure there's other uh, factions and groups uh, out there. Um, I know some of them focus on animal um, uh, issues and agriculture. Um, the two big ones are probably Extinction Rebellion and Insulate Britain. Uh, I didn't really make much of an introduction to this video because I think at this point people have a good idea of what these groups are about. Um, so the Just Stop Oil people, um, their thing is sort of getting under for affairs and uh, in one case um, two people were, uh, it was either the Dartford Crossing or Greys, uh, I forget the precise location, but they hadn't eaten in two days and uh, you know, they were quite rough. They were, um, had, um, well, what you'd expect to look like having been underground for some time. Um, but if they think that these sort of tactics will get the public to feel sorry for them, I'm afraid they're just totally mistaken. Um, the truth is these ego groups have utterly, utterly failed. They've utterly failed. And they have failed because of their absolute refusal to introspect in any way. Now, the UK is an island, and I do think that sustainability is something we need to take very seriously. And there are definitely issues that these groups bring up that warrant um, serious debate and uh, indeed action. But, you know, when the government was trying its best to get international agreements at the Glasgow summit last year, what were they doing? They were protesting outside with St. Greta. I call it that sarcastically because I think there is a personality cult around her. Um, by the way, Greta Thunberg supports the, the sort of actions of Extinction Rebellion, just so that people know where she lies on that. Um, in terms of the disruption, this lot, uh, just stop oil, probably aren't the worst because at least they're not, you know, gluing themselves to roads. So at least traffic's not directly, getting, um, you know, there isn't that direct sort of um, disruption in that sense. But um, nevertheless, it will cause disruption. And we're coming up to Easter now, which is, um, you know, a time when people try to be with their families. They know I'm going to travel to my parents who live in Scotland in a few days. Uh, I'm not too concerned because I don't think, I think these groups are more active around the southeast as opposed to up here in the north. But, um, you know, they have activists across the country and they will try to disrupt as much as they can. Anyway, um, the Jeremy Vine show had uh, an interview with one of these guys um, and his attitude really personified their arrogance. I mean, it was put to him, um, you know, you're hypocrites because have you never driven a car? Have you never, I don't know who the other panelists were. He, he was obviously coming by video. Um, and he said, yeah, we're, we're all hypocrites. That's true. We're not perfect, but that doesn't mean we can't raise concerns. Um, but it was also put to him, uh, the fact that they're not targeting the government, they're targeting ordinary people who are already facing pressure from rising fuel costs, among other things. Now, he evaded the question. And it's the, a typical tactic of eco zealots. They do evade questions like that because they know, they know that they're hurting the public. And that is one of the things I think that is most obnoxious about them. The fact that they're knowingly, willingly hurting ordinary people. Now, they claim that they're peaceful, but deliberately seeking to cause stress and disruption. I don't think that's a peaceful move. I mean, if you describe uh, peace in a very loose way, as in you're not using physical violence, and I suppose they are peaceful, but that doesn't mean that they're benevolent. Um, I think that they are, um, I think they're callous in the sense that they are, they know the disruption they're causing, they know the hurt they're causing, they can't claim ignorance about it, because they've been told over and over and over again, they know how unpopular they are, but they still keep doing it. So I feel that um, they see themselves as martyrs, 
You know, this is a very small minority of people. If you look at Extinction Rebellion, they have, I think the last time I checked, it was about 3,000 likes on the Facebook page. Um, and if I'm getting that right, uh, if it hasn't changed since I, I last looked, you know, that's 3,000 in a country of 67 million people. They have absolute minimal support. It may be that the support seems bigger because their advocates are very vocal. Um, I think they get a bizarre kick out of being hated. I mean, it must take, uh, I'll give them this, they have tough skin because, you know, if you look at their pages, 99% um, of the comments are negative. Very occasionally you'll get one saying you're brave and courageous and you're doing this for the future. But the vast majority of comments are condemning their uh, selfish and disruptive tactics. The vast majority. And that's on their own pages. That isn't even on news reports. So this gets into a question of democratic mandate. They have no mandate. In fact, this guy was asked, well, if you feel so strongly about this, why don't you stand for parliament? You know, uh, make a change. You know, he claims people have tried that before. It doesn't work. In other words, he doesn't really want to, to put himself up for a mandate because they know the public are against them. They're all democratic. So I feel that um, if we cave into these people, it's kind of a tyranny of the minority where you get a very small minority who think that they can dictate to a nation. Um, here's also a very important issue, you know. Uh, they, they're they convinced that their critics are just ignorant people who don't care about planet Earth. Um, I think there's a strong argument to be made that their tactics have done nothing, nothing for the green cause at all. I mean, can they point to anything that has actually reduced carbon emissions? That has caused the government to change a policy? Um, nothing. I mean, there's practical things they could do. They could be lobbying uh, car companies to make electric cars more affordable, as one of the panelists said. They could be supporting green businesses. They could be um, coming up with sustainable solutions. There's a lot that can be done. Um, you know, I'm always on board with uh, productive ideas that can help the planet. Uh, in India, for example, there are roads that have been constructed that are made from a sort of recycled plastic. Um, I mean, you know, that seems like a good idea, but this plastic obviously doesn't decompose. It lasts for hundreds of years. So um, using it in that sense seems like a practical thing. I think there's a lot more that can be done. I think big retail companies still waste too much plastic. Um, you know, you see this in food packaging a lot. So there's definitely more that can be done. Um, but what really, really bugs me is the sheer arrogance of these people that they think they alone are, you know, we're better than everyone else because we care. We're doing it for our children's future. And the rest, you know, everyone else is just living in this dystopian nightmare where they don't care about the dying planet and we're the only ones that care. That's their attitude. So it's extremely self-righteous and arrogant. Um, but they have utterly failed. Utterly failed. Um, the government hasn't changed a single policy because Extinction Rebellion has decided to cause disruption. Well, actually, that's not true. Um, the Home Office, of course, brought in that policing bill. So paradoxically, one of the things that has changed is actually a more hardline approach to that sort of protest. Um, and, you know, critics say that is um, an attack on freedom of assembly and the democratic right to free protest. I don't entirely agree with that. I think that's hyperbole. I don't think the government's banning protest. Um, but, you know, let's say that that is the case. Well, then that is the only thing they've achieved. So, ironically, they've actually made life harder for themselves. Um, but it's a sense of martyrdom, like... They sort of think, well, everyone hates us, we're being abused verbally, uh, we're risking jail, we're heroes. I think that's how they see it. I think they really do see themselves as green martyrs, but they're not doing anything to actually solve the problems. You know, by uh, gluing yourself to a road or camping underneath a thoroughfare for days, all you're doing is putting your own health at risk. Um, and causing public resentment because of the disruption that follows. And no one is going to think, well, these people are so brave, look at what they're prepared to do for their cause. The thing is, if you're going to be a martyr, 
at least get the public on side. Um, it's just, I just find them totally insufferable. Um, I think some of them might be, and I, I don't say this flippantly, I mean this in all seriousness, I think some of them are maybe mentally vulnerable. I think some of them might be mentally vulnerable, and groups like Extinction Rebellion and Insulate Britain are perhaps taking advantage of people who are um, uh, impressionable. I mean, particularly the way they talk to young people, they, they present this image of, uh, you know, we're all going to die in five years. Billions of people, they've literally said this, billions of people will die in five or ten years. So there is a sort of millenarianism to these groups. Uh, I think they are cult-like. Um, I mean, when you consider that they, they literally behave like cults, if you look at those women in Extinction Rebellion that uh, sort of dress in the Venetian masks and there is something a little bit creepy about them I find. Um, now I think there are people who are involved in these movements who are probably at core decent people. You know I used to have neighbours who have now moved out of the area who were I know involved in Extinction Rebellion. They invited me and I told them very plainly what I thought of the group. But they you know, on a personal basis, they were good people. Um, they were always good neighbours. They were, they were clearly caring people. I knew them on a personal level, but I, I was quite blunt with them. I said, "Well, look, um, I respect you. I, I know you, but I'm not going to join this group." And you know, my neighbour said that she agreed. She didn't agree with the tactics. But the problem is, if there are moderate voices on Extinction Rebellion who are saying, well, wait a second, this isn't working. We're only polarising the public. Those voices are being ignored. I think Roger Hallam needs to be seriously scrutinised. I think um, he's an extremist. This is a guy who's called for the overthrow of government. Um, I think he needs to be seriously scrutinised. He's one of the uh, people behind Extinction Rebellion. Um, uh, and I do think there's a real far left component when you think uh, when you consider that they often over that with other um, very hard left causes like decolonization and um, and a whole range of other things. Um, I think I think the majority is just fed up with them. Um, I made a video a while back. Unfortunately, it was one of the videos where the sound quality was off. Um, Sherilyn Spade, uh, the woman who. Um, who's been banned for a year um, as she was caught up in one of these protests. This was one of the ones where they were sitting down, it was in Chile, Britain, and she slowly drove her car forward. Now, the facts are important. She has no record before this. She has no record for reckless driving. Um, anyone who saw the video would see that she very clearly wasn't intending serious harm. She was just trying to get them to shift. She was trying to bring her 11-year-old son to school. This is a woman who I understand is a concierge for disabled children. So um, you've taken away her driving license in South End Magistrates Court um, um, then puts those children at a disadvantage. Um, yet, disgracefully, not a single thing happened to the women who uh, you know, glued themselves to the road. The police were nowhere to be seen. One bright person commented, well, she should have waited for the police to turn up. But that's just the point. The police were nowhere to be seen. I have to say, the way the police have handled this has, for the most part, been um, totally incompetent. Totally incompetent. And, you know, we have this perverse situation where the public understandably lose their temper, and then they're criminalised. It's perverse. Um, suffice to say, the vast majority backed her. Um, but, you know, this woman has had to go through months and months of legal bureaucracy. She didn't know what her fate's going to be. Um, all because of a very, very human reaction. She slowly drove her vehicle forward. She was not, you know, forcing the car forward at a really fast pace as if, you know, intending serious harm. Um, I really think it should have been a mitigating factor. The fact that... Um, she was simply responding to the fact that police weren't, and she lost her temper. Now she said that she shouldn't have done what she's done. I think a lot of people would say it was totally understandable. Um, but, you know, I'll close with this. I just think that, um, I think these groups should be prescribed. 
you know, you get left-wing commentators like James O'Brien and others who falsely claim, falsely claim that these uh, activists are arrested because of the cause they believe in. That's deceptive and it's bad journalism. They're not being arrested on the occasions that they are. The police are often slow to act um, because they're campaigning for the environment or they claim to be. Um, that's not why they're being arrested. They're arrested because they're breaking the law. So it's bad journalism and uh, a distortion to claim that is why they're being arrested. Um, a scaremongering. Because again, it kind of martyrizes and says, oh, the big bad government's, uh, you know, preventing people from peaceful protest. Democracy gives you a right to peacefully protest. It does not give you a right to deliberately hurt the public and to break the law. It doesn't. It never has. You know, and as for suffragette analogies, I mentioned this before, but there's no evidence that hardline suffragettes who planted bombs the year 1913 was the peak of this. There's no evidence that that sort of militant suffragette activity got women the vote. Uh, I believe there was a range of factors. I believe it was a changing labour market brought about by World War One. Women were taking jobs that traditionally were held by men, and you know they played a part in the war effort. Um, also, the tireless but more moderate uh, actions of other suffragettes. But there's no evidence that that militant activity got women the vote. It's another distortion that groups like Extinction Rebellion like to come out with. Oh, what about the suffragettes? What about the civil rights movement? Well, again, let's look at the civil rights movement. Look at the act actions around Selma. Um, it's true that in the beginning, the wider American public probably weren't on board. But when they saw peaceful people being brutally beaten by the police, uh, you know, the Alabama and Mississippi State Guards um, or state police, um, the wider American public, you know, got on side. That's why that movement was ultimately successful, because Martin Luther King and others realized that they had to get the wider public on side. That is what the likes of Extinction Rebellion and Insulate Britain utterly fail to comprehend. And that is where they have failed, where other um, movements in history have succeeded, because they have turned the public against them and they don't care. They don't care. I think they should be prescribed. Um, I think certainly they should face legal consequences when they break the law. But um, I think jailing them makes them feel like martyrs. So I think hefty fines might be more of actually get to them more and be less, you know, it, it's less of a, a sort of way of making them. Apparently they were disappointed during the Glasgow summit that they weren't arrested because they wanted to embarrass the government. That's what the mentality is. They actually wanted to go to prison because they thought it would embarrass the government. And as it turned out, very few of them did. So that little ploy failed miserably. Um, but, you know, if you're a, a affiliated to any of these groups, for God's sake, just introspect. Just wake up and realise it's not working. It's just not working. Even if you take the attitude to hell with the wider public, even if you want to show contempt for democracy, ask yourselves honestly, is it working? You know, because people are going to start to think, actually, you don't really care about the pop planet. You're just interested in exhibitionism. You want your 15 minutes of fame. Part of me thinks the media shouldn't give them attention. It's they crave it. They love it. Part of me thinks that if journalists weren't covering this, um, you know, not interviewing them, then they just go away. There might be something in that. So maybe the media does have a role to play in this. They're covering it less. Let me know your thoughts, but I just find them insufferable. And I, I strongly resent the idea they have that if people are against them, they're somehow against their cause. They're not. They're just against the obnoxious, counterproductive and um, selfish tactics. And it is selfish. They say it's not because they're fighting for their children's future. It's selfish to knowingly disrupt other people. That's a selfish action. 